Hi, I'm Phil. I'm the founder and CEO of Rich Commerce. In one of our previous videos, we looked at what a customer of yours sees when um, they use our Rich Returns application to initiate a return through your store, which gives you a great kind of automation, uh, lessens your burden on, on customer service uh, inquiries, and gives the customer a really great experience, a, a post-purchase experience when they want to initiate a return in your store. So let's now look into the back, the, the magic part, uh, the dashboard that we provide you as a merchant to really customize um, our hosted return portal to your brand. Um, so you can really profit from this, both from an automation standpoint, as well as a, as a branding standpoint. So essentially once a customer initiates a return and it's in the system, um, you can see it here in the list. You can filter this with different statuses. So there are some returns still pending. Some have already been approved. Um, this is just a great overview. We will come back to this in a couple of seconds. Let's just see what we can do with settings. So we have settings here on the left regarding our returns. We have settings regarding our brand. So how does the, 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 the customer portal look like? We have settings regarding emails. So you can send customized emails to your customers and then settings regarding connections, for example, a connection to our Shopify store or Intercom Messenger, um, things like this. Let's just start with the return settings. It's a really simple page, return settings. Um, essentially says that you just want to define essentially your resolution options as well as all the other details of the shipping process. First thing is return reasons. You can put in as many custom return reasons as you want. Um, and it really will depend on your store. For example, I've been running large scale um, fitness clothing stores in the past. So the first two options would probably be for me, like it didn't fit too large, um, didn't fit too small, something like a defective item, which might be from um, your producer or uh, the item is damaged, which might be related to um, the carrier you use. I think it's really important to really map out those different reasons so you can act on them and really improve your business uh, meaning provide a better sizing guide for example to reduce returns or if items are defective with a specific carrier probably change the carrier it's really important the next point is which is optional you can exclude certain products um, based on their product tax from being returned which means for example if you have some hygienic like underwear or something or sales articles that you want to exclude because they're like um, have been really much uh, reduced in price and you don't want to return them. You can just put the product tag that you have in your Shopify store on those products, for example, sale or no return or something like that and put the exact product tag here. Let's just add one that says, for example, a product tag no return that I have in my Shopify store and those will be excluded for the customer. Uh, you have different return options. First is refund to store credit, which is a great way to retain uh, retain money um, in your store. Essentially, do not refund the money to the original payment method like this, but refund it to a store credit so the customer is not issued uh, real currency, but essentially a virtual store currency, and then they can come back later. Another thing would be to exchange product. So uh, you also can retain your sales when the customer just wants to exchange, change the size, for example, which is pretty common for clothing stores, for example, uh, you can enable or disable them anyhow you like, just, where uh, just like with the next method, the return methods, which uh, essentially states that um, you can use prepared return labels. Uh, you can use a courier of a customer's choice. For example, if the customer's in a very exotic foreign country uh, where you don't have any relationship to carriers, um, you can also do an in-store return uh, if you have like a multi-channel approach and you have an online store, you have an, an in-store return, um, which I think is a really great. Um, you have a different return timeframes, um, depending most likely on the country you're in. For a lot of European countries, there is a, um, a given time frame by law that you have to attend to. I think it's a little easier in the US to do that. So you can just essentially put in the days that a customer is allowed to initiate a, a return. The next option has been pretty much requested by a lot of merchants, customers of us in the past is some people just want to, they don't want to approve returns by hand. They just want to um, automatically, automatically, what we always call it, 
accept returns. So customers can initiate the return and then, for example, directly the shipping label, the prepaid shipping label is shipped out to them via PDF, via email, via download, which is great, which saves you, again, a lot of time for someone who has to do that by hand if it's not automatically done. There's a return address. We had a previous field, as you can see down, which says deprecated, which um, summarize the entire address in one text field, which turned out to be not accurate enough. So especially if you provide prepaid shipping labels, um, the address has to be 100% um, correct. So a good measure of that is go to Google Maps, enter your address, and Google Maps will most likely correct your address. Uh, meaning, you know, for example, the city, the street, if there's any abbreviations or something like that, that's a great one. So we've uh, essentially, listed all countries of this planet. So you can just select your country and then fill out the information as you need. Some fields are optional, as you see here, it's an optional field. Um, and some, most fields are obligatory. Um, there are some other fields that are not currently used. You can already fill them out. Once you roll the feature, um, it'll directly be applied. Let's just hit save. It says, okay, return settings saved. Uh, there's another dialogue that I didn't mention. It's uh, if you for the prepaid return labels. Um, I'm gonna do this in a in a different video, but you can essentially enter your entire package dimensions, package weight, default units in this little dialogue, which is, is incredibly helpful. And the one minute setup to set up the prepaid return labels. Second dialogue is the brand settings. So for the brand settings. Um, Essentially, you can enter brand names, your store URL, your Shopify store URL, which is different from your store URL. Um, a unique identifier that we use in the URL for your personal return portal, a contact address. You can upload your logo and your background image. If we quickly skip to the page, for example, I made a, a demo page for Rich Commerce. Um, so this is our logo. This is the background image and it's super easy to change. Essentially, you can just delete it and then I could upload something else. Let's just say I take this uh, muscular guy, upload the image and then just save it so we can reload the page and it's directly in there, which is super cool. So you've set up this portal, this completely customized portal in like let's say 30 seconds or something and it looks great to your customers. If you don't want a background image, you can also choose some colors that match your brand. I think it's also pretty convenient. Uh, we then have email settings. So there's different stages of a return. Return might be pending. It might be approved. If you, for example, auto approve it or approve it by hand, um, it can be shipped. For example, if we have provided a prepared return label, um, that's easy to do. Received, it's been resolved or been rejected. For example, if it's if, if you do not accept the return for any reason. And it also gives you a description here, for example, when the email is sent out, so pending, approved. Um, and you can use personalization. So we have some dynamic variables like the customer first name, last name, a download link for the label, a uh, tracking link for the label that you can use here in uh, your emails, which I think is pretty cool. You can activate or deactivate the emails um, so they are sent out or not. Um, and I think it's a great experience for your customers. For connections, we're already connected to Shopify, as you can see here. We also have an intercom connection where essentially, if you have an intercom widget, intercom is a chat service, customer messenger service. I would say it's more than a chat service. So you get a, a chat window on the bottom right of your screen. It will be here uh, where you can contact a customer support um, agent. And then for us, it lets you say, okay, I've got a return, so I do not have to talk to a person, which costs a lot of money, but I can just enter my, my order data and directly return the product inside the intercom window, which is super great. Other than that, we're gonna return to our returns uh, window. And let's just say, for example, we have here, um, we're gonna press an edit. You can edit the current status of your order. Uh, you can see he was a customer. What's the email? You can, this link will bring you directly to Shopify. So if you have to change anything on the order, you can just click, go to Shopify. Um, other than that, you have order date. You have one was the return requested. What is the resolution? Um, what is the product that's being returned? Uh, so there's a ton you can do and customize in 
the back end. All right, I hope that covers it. If there's anything you know where you can reach me, just uh, hit the help button or uh, reach me at phil at richcommerce.co. Looking forward to it. Bye.